Item number, SCP-047, Object Class, Keter. Special Containment Procedures. SCP-047 is to be contained in a 0.5 meter by 0.5 meter by 1 meter hermetically sealed storage box at all times. This box is to be locked in Storage Locker 047A inside P3 Secure Biohazard Lab 047B. Any entrance to and activity inside 047B will be recorded by biometric scan, closed circuit camera, and Entry to 047B requires the authorization of the project manager, in addition to at least one O5 level clearance. SCP-047 is to be treated as a priority for contagious biohazard in all protocols, including mandatory quarantine if exposed. Suite Q-047 has been provided, adjunct to Lab 047B for this purpose. In the event of outside contamination of SCP-047-1, Lockdown Protocol 047-01, Yersinia, must be engaged. Description: SCP-047 is a heavily rusted breached gas cylinder made of an iron alloy. When exposed to open air, the material of the cylinder evaporates slowly, producing a previously undocumented mutagenic gas. This gas has no effect on eukaryotic organisms, for example humans but profoundly alters prokaryotes, showing preference for common human microbiota, the natural microorganisms that live on the skin and throughout the body. On rare occasions, these mutations produce a superbug, collectively known as SCP-047-1, a natural commensal with enhanced survivability and therefore opportunistic pathogenicity. The pattern of changes induced by SCP-047 suggests that these highly infectious microbes are, at least to some degree, selected for. Although the specifics of SCP-047-1 species are dependent on the base bacterium from which it is derived, there are several characteristics which appear to be generally consistent across all cases of SCP-047-1 mutation. Enhanced survivability in the bacterium's natural environment and similar environments. Full spectrum antibiotic resistance. Increased reproduction rate and consumption of available material. Development of a spore relation ability in gram-positive bacteria. Increased ability to uptake, hold, and share plasmids, particularly in gram-negative bacteria. Increased transmission due to traits described above. SCP-047-1 samples are normally debilitating and virulent. However, compared to other Keter class SCPs, it should be noted that SCP-047-1 have a relatively low mortality rate due to their action through mundane biological pathways. Several strains of bacteria have been selectively mutated by SCP-047. Mutation of bacteria and culture is possible, but the process appears to be much more effective with bacteria living on a human host. Generally, mutation of natural commensals for experimental purposes is encouraged. After the containment breach of January 30th, 2010, mutation of already pathogenic species is banned and all existing samples must be destroyed. Three particular species of SCP-047-1 mutated bacteria are of note due to their involvement in the containment breach. Propionum bacterium 047-A is a strain of Propionum bacteria acnes mutated by SCP-047. Pathogenicity Severe skin colonization around sebaceous glands. Modification of skin pH to levels that become toxic to skin cells. Massive inflammation and immune cell infiltration. Eventual breakdown of skin structure, leading to sepsis. Transmission. Transmitted by skin-to-skin -skin contact. Can remain active on inorganic surfaces for up to five hours. Lethality. Approximately 40% mortality rate. Runs its course in two to six weeks. Very visible symptoms within 5 to 10 hours. Contagious within 2 to 5 hours. Handling. As soon as visible symptoms form, victims must be quarantined. Deceased victims should be incinerated. Streptococcus 047-C is a strain of Streptococcus mitis mutated by SCP-047. Pathogenicity. Causes inflammation of the mouth and esophagus initially 
leads to open sores in the mouth, which result in S-047-C entering the bloodstream and becoming septic. Death is usually due to infectious endocarditis. Transmission Droplet can remain active indefinitely by sporulation. Lethality Approximately 35% mortality rate may become a recurring chronic condition if non-lethal. Handling Subjects with any sign of mouth infection should be quarantined. Deceased victims should be incinerated. Clostridium 047-A is a strain of Clostridium difficile mutated by SCP-047. Pathogenicity Unknown C-047-A was developed from tissue culture and has never been exposed to a human. No samples remain in Foundation control. Transmission Unknown Presumably transmitted through fecal contamination, as with C. difficile. Due to smaller, more robust spores, may aerosolize with flatus. Effects of aerosol intake of Z-047-A cannot be predicted. Lethality Unknown Presumed extremely high risk of destruction of endothelial lining of gastrointestinal tract, leading to inflammation, sepsis, and toxic megacolon. Handling until further research has been done, victims should be quarantined and placed under 24-hour medical observation to develop functional diagnostics for this strain. Deceased victims should not be incinerated until adequate etiological research has been performed. Incident Report Yersinia 047-01, 2010 SCP Involved SCP-047 Description on January 30th, 2010, at approximately 0300 hours, storage locker 047C, containing bacterial samples mutated by SCP-047, was compromised after a complete simultaneous data expunged, leading to failure of security measures in the area. Three samples of a total 12 were stolen. Since the initial containment break, outbreaks of one of the stolen bacterial strains, Propiana bacterium 047-A, were recorded globally in communities of increasing size and population density. Further information on stolen material, spread, and containment follows. Compromised Items Propiana Bacterium 047-A, Streptococcus 047-C, and Clostridium 047-A. Outbreak Information First Outbreak February 27, 2010, Siberia Contained Second Outbreak P-047-A March 30th, 2010 Northwest Territories, Canada Contained Third Outbreak April 29th, 2010 South Australia Contained Fourth Outbreak May 27th, 2010 Mato Grosso, Brazil Believed Contained Warning Agents in the area are advised to familiarize themselves with the symptoms of P-047-A and be on the lookout for possible infection. Fifth Outbreak June 26, 2010 Iraq Site immediately data expunged, which is believed to have contained the infection. Access to incident report denied without O5 clearance. Sixth Outbreak July 26, 2010 Cameroon Quarantine enacted Efforts to track outgoing civilians underway. Infection not contained. Seventh Outbreak August 24, 2010 Dalarna, Sweden. Quarantine enacted. Believed contained. Warning. Agents in the area are advised to familiarize themselves with the symptoms of P-047-A and be on the lookout for possible infection. Eighth Outbreak Not recorded. Believed to have taken place in North Korea. Data expunged. Agents with government access are attempting to gain access to parallel information, but due to data expunged, local services have been extremely uncooperative. Containment status unknown. Ninth outbreak. October 23, 2010. South Carolina, United States of America. Quarantine enacted. Efforts to track outgoing civilians primarily successful. One civilian in a pickup truck is believed to have data expunged. Infection not contained. Resolution Reports from data expunged indicate no further outbreaks are believed likely. 
but agents are advised to be on the lookout for new flare-ups resulting from uncontained civilians in previous outbreak regions. These may continue for years to come, due to P-047-A sporulation. Investigation into the cause of the initial compromise is underway. Anyone with useful information may anonymously contact security via the attached form. Recovery Log 047 SCP-047 was recovered from Site Secure Laboratory by a Foundation Biohazard Recovery Team in response to a full compromise situation in 1990. Testing logs indicate that the research team was attempting to contain data expunged in an SCP-stable pressure cylinder, which led to combining with the initial release of gas when SCP-047 was structurally compromised was sufficient to cause a microbiotal bloom of uncounted species of SCP-047-1, killing all staff in the lab within hours. Exposed staff obeyed standard Foundation quarantine and containment protocol, and the infection was contained successfully. Lesson complete. If you missed the previous orientation, go watch SCP-046, Predatory Hollybush, right now, or for the complete course, Watch this playlist.